Hi, I'm Dr. Simon Freiler, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about muscle recruitment and interference patterns on EMG. The first thing to talk about is recruitment. What do we mean by this? Here we're talking about the size principle or the Henneman principle named after Elwood Henneman, an American neurophysiologist who described this in the 1960s. Smaller motor neurons are activated in an orderly manner before the larger motor neurons. We will also find that they fire more frequently before the larger ones are recruited into being activated. In general, fibers fire at five hertz and then increase their rate as we try to increase force and power and in every five hertz step, they then add further motor units to generate additional force. This is of course a generalism and mostly is true. However, this doesn't always work out in all of the muscles, particularly around the facial muscles, which tend to recruit far more rapidly um, than in the limbs. And particularly the proximal thigh muscles tend to have larger MUPs at their start of recruitment. And I suspect the reasons for this is to do with the particular roles that they have to play. So for the proximal thigh muscles, the brain already knows that they're going to be having to do a lot of effort from the very get-go. And so it would make sense to be using large motor units um, to generate force. And for eye blinking, particularly around the orbicularis uh, oculi uh, muscles, you need to be able to generate a very fast uh, twitch in order to stop things going to a person's eye. So I think there are physiological reasons for different muscles having slightly different patterns of recruitment to the general principle, but the general principle still holds true for the vast majority of muscles. We will now see in the following video what I mean by this. I'm now going to demonstrate how recruitment and interference patterns are exhibited in a normal healthy individual, myself in this case, and uh, demonstrate how the EMG procedure works. So first thing I'm going to do is pop a grounding lead on and then we're going to take a stirret and uh, just clean the skin over here like so. And then we're going to take a very thin wire much finer than a blood taking needle it's really not a big deal this at all and we're going to insert the pin in like so so you can hear first of all that the muscle is silent at rest you can see the occasional unit firing now so I'm imagining that I'm lifting up my fingers and as I'm beginning to generate a little bit of force So we've got a single motor unit firing away there. As I'm increasing the amount of effort I'm using with my middle finger here to raise it up, it's speeding up, you can hear that. And another motor unit has come through. And as both of these are speeding up, there's more motor units coming in. And then eventually the whole screen gets filled with motor units and that's called the interference pattern. So the more motor units that are recruited in, the more uh, motor unit potentials are on the screen. When we're talking about interference patterns, we're talking about the fullness of signal on the screen. So the fewer the muscle fibers being activated, the more reduced the interference pattern will be. These have very different characteristics in the pathological states between neuropathies and myopathies. And you can see further information and explanations on these by following the iCard above. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. Many thanks and see you on the next video.